Yes, guys, welcome back to the Lily White Lab. Um, we have something quite different today. Um, we have a special guest who is formerly of Spurs Academy. Um, used to play for Spurs under the Pochettino regime. Um, and now is more in the world of film, but I'll let him introduce that. Um, Will, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Nice to see you, bro. Yeah, this is someone who I've known for a long time. Um, uh, his younger brother is one of my best mates. So we went to school together and, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I thought it'd be, it'd be interesting to get him on, um, kind of get like a player's take on what academy football is like. Um, Spurs Academy specifically and, and kind of how his journey unfolded and, and, and um, how his links to Spurs kind of carried him on into, into other aspects of his life. Um, so yeah, we'll just, we'll just start with kind of, I guess, start with what you're actually, what you're doing now. We know obviously you were, you were a footballer previously, but what, what, what's the, what are you up to currently? Uh, so I left football about four years ago. And um, I left with two two other players, Marvin Sordell and Harry Campbell, who I both played with at Burton Albion in the Championship. And we founded a production company uh, quite naively, kind of just jumped straight into this crazy world. Started making a lot of films. Um, and then quite quickly, because we kind of had like a niche background in football, we started making films about football. We started making films of Adidas and the England national team and films with Raheem Sterling and John Stones. And most recently with EA Sports, did a film with Beckham and Zidane. Um, so directing them was mental because they're like, you know, absolute heroes. So it's been a bit of a crazy journey kind of going from the football world into this into this creative film world, but one one that's been been really good and one that I think we've been able to to you know transfer skills over and 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 use the foundations that football built us um in, in this new career yeah so that that's um obviously a crazy like transition from from most people who probably drop out of the game that's probably quite a, a rare um rare route I guess um so we'll touch on that in more specifics later, but I want to probably start um, right the way back, I guess, when you first started playing football um, and how you kind of got into academy system, the academy system in general. Um, I mean, like most people have been playing football since I can, I can remember from like two, three years old, kicking the ball around. I think quite early I got, when I was, I was about six and I got into the late late Orient Center of Excellence, um, and so was kind of chucked into a, an academy like setup quite young with that kind of regimental Tuesday Thursday training game Saturday or whatever it was, um, and that was great. And then I think around ten, I came I came out of it by my own choice. Um, to do some other stuff, some other life stuff. And when I was about 13, I was like, okay, cool, I want to pursue football again. And and I remember getting into the Tottenham development squad, um, which trained like every Friday or every Monday. And I spent about six or seven months to a year in there working as hard as I could to try and get noticed and try and get in. And eventually it happened. And when I was a, an under 15, I went into Tottenham but it, it it was it was actually quite unique because they kind of they kind of gave me like a year's trial, um, and they played me down a year because I was quite small, so I was an under fifteen playing with the under fourteens, um, and that was my kind of journey up into the academy football and in, into Tottenham as well. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into more detail on no, that no, journey no, or yeah, what parts of interest. Touch on, I guess yeah, we'll, we'll go into more details in general, but I think um, probably. Quite a lot of people don't know that sometimes players get pushed into age groups maybe above or below um, what, where they actually are. Um, what do you think, I guess in both ways, if, if a player is going to be going up an age group um, or a player is going to be going down an age group, what do you think that does for a player? Uh, maybe both positively and negatively, I guess. I mean, I can only speak from my 
personal experience but for me it really didn't help and i felt like it would because i was less physically mature than most people at 14 15 so i felt like playing down here would be a fantastic opportunity but there was something about it maybe knowing that i'm not with my own age group and i'm the oldest and i'm not signed i'm a trialist that i was slightly more self-conscious than i should have been and was playing within myself a little bit more and I remember s spending half the season playing under 14s and not doing that well and not getting in the team and not impacting games very much. And then halfway through the season, they must have been all right, let's just put them with his own age group. And we played, I remember we were playing Chelsea and it was my first game in my own age group and suddenly it clicked and I felt so much better where I was. Um, and, I, and I'm sure that was just a psychological thing. Um, uh, yeah, and, I guess that. kind of being with <laughs> I guess with 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 those kind of things, I think it, it must be psychologically have an effect because I guess if you make a mistake or you have a bad game, you think, well, I guess a, a less confident player could always start thinking, well, if I can't do it at this age, then how am I going to play with the kind of year above? And um, mm. and I guess also yeah, just exactly. playing with people younger than you is is always like probably more pressure on you to kind of be at a certain level every week or. Whatever. So I think those are the kind of things I want to I want to get into in terms of um, the pressures of, of, of academies and, and stuff like that. But I guess, first of all, just just carry on from kind of that under 15 level you were at and, and how did it kind of develop at, at Spurs? Well, my personal journey, obviously, I started playing my own age group and then we played an amazing tournament called the Night Cup tournament, which obviously is, is quite renowned and a lot of people are playing that tournament towards the end of the season and and we had an amazing run in that and I was playing number 10 starting every game and I personally had a really great tournament and as soon as that tournament finished I got signed and I was in and I, and I had my contract until the end of under 16s where where they'd make the decision whether you get your scholarship or not um and yeah I guess trying to think back to that time it's a tricky stage it's a tricky stage handling GCSEs and putting so much into football at that point. And, and in truth, like maybe a lot of people do, which, which I don't um, agree with, but my, my behavior definitely might've been a little bit like, I'm going to get a scholarship. So I'm not gonna, you know, my GCSE is fine. If I just, if I don't, if I don't study too hard for this science exam, but I remember it being like they made the decision quite late. So I found out quite late whether I was going to get a scholarship or not. Um, and that that was always like a tricky year to navigate and, and work yeah, so out I what you're going to do if you're going to. What, what was the gap between you getting signed and then getting your scholarship? How long was that? Like a year, like basically a year. Okay. So, so the end of under 15s got signed and then end of under 16s. Get so I guess. Did you feel pretty settled once you got signed um, and kind of, I guess, put the the scholarship to the back of your mind and and, and just well, was happy to be to be signed? I guess. Yeah, I was just delighted to be signed, and I think like our our age group, we had such a good group of boys. Like I had such good friends and, and made friends very quickly, and so that's that always helps, you know, when you're in that team environment. So I built great relationships, which which gave me a good foundation and gave me more confidence as well. Um, and then I do think that, that, you know, luckily, like Tottenham had fantastic coaches as well. Um, obviously, like it was it was headed up by John McDermott, the academy manager at the time. And and I think from him all the way down, they, they really cared about the development of us as people and not just as footballers. So I think they were they were very aware of how these decisions affected us and, and, and all of those things. Okay. So then, so, so you become a scholar. Um, so that's obviously at 16, that's sort of the end of your edu I guess, education, um, well, full-time education and, and you, you move into kind of a footballer world. Um, just for people that don't know what's like an average day, like as a scholar, um, or as a, just not specifically a scholar, but as just a footballer within, the under 18s or the under 23s what what is it like a so the 18s and the 23s for, for you know for, for me back then it was quite different so the 18s obviously as soon as you signed your scholar for us we had to move into digs that was like a part of the 
the the kind of development and the process and the evolution of us as people is they wanted us to move away from home and be comfortable with that. Um, so every morning, I remember we'd get picked up from digs at like 8 a.m. And, and I've just turned 16 at this point, so we're still young. Um, we get picked up from digs at like 8 a.m. in this minivan that would go around and pick all the boys up from their digs. And we get into the training ground about 8.30. And uh, the, I remember the days were long, bro. They were long. We'd be there until 6 p.m. Like, they really worked us and put us through our paces um, during our youth team. Like, a, I, I don't know. I, I could take you through, the, like, a, 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 an average day. Um, but they, they were they were long, tough days, and they, they put us through our paces, both, like, physically and mentally. They were always trying to push us and and um, and develop us. And, yeah, what's the step up like from, I guess being a being a non scholar like a younger academy player and then and then signing that scholar how does how does how does life change then i guess football wise how does it change um i think the physicality and the standard just jumps so quickly because you're suddenly so the scholars is made up of the under 17s and the under 18s and so you're suddenly stepping up to an age group that have had a year of full time football and 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 this is a very different i i guess in a way it's a very different atmosphere and 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 the the kind of dynamics between the team shift slightly and you become a much bigger team um whereas before it's just your one age group suddenly you've got two um and so the jump was massive i remember the jump being big both physicality and technically um and the and the game in general and i think it definitely took me a couple of months to adapt and find my feet and and start like playing my game um yeah do they do they have like individual plans or de- like development plans for each player and how is there like a clear well i guess you don't know what it's like now but at, at that time was there like a clear kind of set out pathway for each player and in, in how they're going to sort of turn them into a professional or is it pretty loose and and kind of general that's a difficult question to answer um I think that things can change so quickly in football that to me it felt quite loose. Like I always had the sense that at Tottenham, like I said, they were trying to develop us as footballers, but as people as well. And I felt like they really mentally tested us all the time in football and outside of it and the way that they man managed people. And and there would be times where you would have the momentum with you and you'd feel like the, the coaches were really pushing you to go to your top. And then there were points where they were trying to test you and see how much they could knock you back and you not fall over and you keep or you keep getting up and going again and going again. They wanted to build that resilience and that strength for when you step into men's football and into a men's world and you don't have people looking after you and coddling you in the same way. Um and I yeah, I mean I can't speak for how calculated that was, but I felt like it was it was it was it was quite loose and and free flowing how the momentum would shift in in your career at the time, especially in the under eighteens, um, because then anything can happen. Like obviously, you could get a a long term injury or short term injury, and that stops your momentum. Or you could have one amazing game and a loan scout be at that game, and suddenly people are interested in you for for a loan deal. Or you could go out with one session with the first team and absolutely tear it to pieces, and suddenly they're really interested in you, and you get taken up there. So I feel like, I mean, I reckon there was a loose structure for what they felt like each individual's pathway was going to be. But from from my perspective, actually being in it, it felt quite loose and quite flexible and like things can change like that. Yeah, of course, that, that yeah. all makes sense. Um, so I guess with, with those kind of things where they're trying to test you and, and, and being in a competitive environment in general every single day, and I guess... Um, that's one thing I probably I probably struggled with when I would maybe go on trials at academies or, or whatever. Um, the competitiveness um, from player to player is something very different from, I guess, normal football because at the end of the day, you can be a team and you can be mates, but you're all trying to push for the same goal and there's, there's obviously limited spaces. So I guess how did that competitiveness and, and pressure on every single day kind of create... Well, what did, how, what did that kind of have, what effects did that have on you, I guess, um, both at the time and then maybe later on um, in your life? 
it made you on point all the time. Like you could never take a day off. You just could never, you could never cut reps. You could never cut runs. You could never like not put everything in. I feel like um, obviously at Tottenham, there was so much competition. There were so many good players um, and, and not just like local players, like they're constantly bringing trialists in from all around the world. And so you're not just competing against your own team. You're also competing against everyone else out there. And I remember them stressing to us as well, like, you know, there's only so many spots in the Football League, in the Pyramid. Forget the Premier League, like down to League Two, there's only so many places. And so you're not just competing against this team, you're competing against all the boys out there to try and get those limited numbers of spaces to earn a career. So I think every day it made you like on your A game, um, or it did for me anyway. But it's, it's an interesting one because cause you're trying to develop as a as a team and perform well as a team. But at the same time, we were very much aware, like, we've got to do our own thing as well. Like, we've got to make sure that we're, we're you know, we're doing our thing. And, and there were definitely times where it would get feisty or it would get a little bit techy or it would get, like, a little bit tense, um, especially, like, in training and physically. And I think that... The, to be honest, I feel like the the coaches they 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 love that they love to see that fight and that desire and because it that, that never goes away in football really really like obviously it changes when you get into a first team it comes much more about the team it's less about the solo but you're still you're still competing to keep your place all the time um, but yeah I feel like I feel like that was in, encouraged at times when it was healthy that kind yeah, of that tension and that and that was. Um interesting mm. point because i guess yeah it's not just that academy level i guess you're always fighting for a contract or or, or a first team place and your and your career kind of it can never really be on pause you've always got to be fighting in football because one week you can you can be the best player on the pitch and if you're not the same next week then then that all goes out the window kind of thing so i think um mm. that pressure is just something that comes with i guess elite sport and um some people can probably handle it um, a lot better than others, I guess. Um, but yeah, mm. I want to I want to now touch on like that era, I guess, because for a lot of Spurs fans, that's one of the most like entertaining and 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 um, positive eras that that we've had in a long time um, at the club. So probably from the first team, but also down to some of the players that were brought through at the time. Um, so. Yeah, I just I just want to touch on some of the kind of names that were you were playing with at the time in your year, and then maybe um, also in and around the age groups that you that you were playing in. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, yeah, I guess which who were the kind of success stories from from those those age groups uh, in and around you, um, and I guess did you always kind of see that that talent from from the start, or were there some kind of surprises within that? There were so many, there was so many success stories and so many surprises as well, I guess. Um, I think like the age group I came up with, a lot of us made it, I reckon more than, than like the average age groups, the amount of people that made it to professional football and played, you know, professional games, which is, which is one hell of an achievement if you look at the stats. Um, and there were different levels of success and surprise, but you have like, I don't know, the biggest name in, in my team was was obviously Winksy. Um, and Winksy, I think everyone always knew he was going to be, he was going to, you know, he was going to play for Tottenham. Like there was, there was just, a, there was an aura. I, I feel like there was an aura and just a, a relentless drive in him that that was what he was going to be and nothing was going to stop him. Um, and I feel like as talented as he was and as technical as he was, I feel like his mentality played such a big part in how successful he was. Um, but yeah, he was always an amazing player. Like I remember I guess, going to yeah, tournaments in on, Spain and playing on, against Yeah, on him, I guess, because I, I saw him play against like Real Madrid and, and play, play their midfield off the park one game. So I think like his his ability obviously goes under the radar, but also to make it up the up the ranks <clears throat> as a, as an academy player and break into a very strong side at the time it wasn't a side that was like mid table it was a side that was going for league titles and going for kind of champions latter rounds of the champions mm. league so did you did you and the club do you think 
saw that in him from 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 the start or was it you think his drive that kind of took him took him to that or a bit of both I guess I think you need both and I think they saw both and I think like it it, it I mean it did it didn't happen overnight like it took Winksy a it took it took Winksy a while to fully establish himself in the first team and get into their changing room full time and he really put the work in and kept his head down and and worked really really hard like it wasn't I wouldn't say it wasn't easy for him to to establish himself the way that he did. Like it took him, it probably took him, you know, three years of training continuously and pushing and pushing and pushing it until he really established himself and like cemented that spot in the midfield. Um, And I think that is, you know, so much down to his mentality. Um, And I think that was a big thing for Pochettino as well. Like you needed the right mentality. You needed to carry yourself in the right way on and off the pitch. Um, and I think like Winksy, Winksy proved that and 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 made it. And I guess someone who maybe didn't probably need that drive and just had sort of, well, I'm sure he, every player that comes through has that certain set of drive. But in in terms of natural talent and and kind of ability to just change a game on his own, um, is a player who I don't think was in your year, but I'm sure you played with, which is Marcus Edwards, who's obviously tearing it up in. Portugal um at one of the biggest clubs there so did you did you play with him or was he he was slightly younger right no I played with Marcus in the 23s um Marcus Marcus was one of the most talented players I've ever seen no doubt like the ability that he had you just couldn't get the ball off of him like he he is like no one could deny how special his talent was I think um and like you, you can see how well he's doing in Portugal, how well he's been doing for a while. I'll be excited to see him come to the Prem at some yeah, point. Yeah, and, and um, within the within but, the academy with a with a player like that, I think because um, at the moment Spurs have a couple of players who who are kind of well known around around Europe who are coming through. And I guess when there is that level of talent there, um, especially with the kind of more technical, naturally gifted players, it, it, is there kind of is that known within within the club that they, this is the player they really want to push and that could really go on to do kind of special things and and are they kind of treated and not treated differently but is there a set path for them and, and kind of a real desire to get them to the first team specifically? Yeah, I think you can always tell by who's being pushed up with the first team most and who's getting exposure and experiences training with them and then obviously like in cup games or or even in in the league, um, I think it can become quite obvious who's being pushed, who's really being pushed and and being considered seriously for that. Um, there's also like the preseason tours and the end of season end of season tours and whatnot. And if you're on, then then like you know, usually you could feel like yeah, you're in and around it, you're in their force. I think you could tell like Mar- Marcus Marcus was so talented, like there was no way he wasn't gonna be considered for that I think he's like proper special talent um and yeah I, I don't I don't know personally what went wrong at Tottenham um but whatever happened obviously the 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 move now and the journey he's gone on looks like it's 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 been fruitful because he's killing it so yeah and I think one thing, for him. one thing fans probably don't quite understand at times especially in like the new social media areas that development is never going to be linear so it's not like there's just a set way and there's going to be no like bumps in the road or no kind of you can't really predict a player's growth from say 16 up to 21 in the first team it's going to always be maybe like Harry Kane went out on loan numerous times and and not everyone's going to have kind of a set pathway through um and it's good to see that he's kind of gone out and and been successful um elsewhere Mm. um there's one one well, a couple other academy players I just want to quickly touch on um, that I think were in your year group, but correct me if I'm wrong. So there was, well, I think at the time, quite like a golden-ish generation coming through, um, which was like Carl Walker-Peters, um, Josh Onoma. Um, are they the, they the, were they the two main ones who broke through? And Winks, obviously. Was there anyone else? Cameron Carter-Vickers. Yeah. Was that Celtic doing very well? 
Yeah, they were probably the the biggest ones, but I think pretty much everyone that was in and around that team made a professional appearance, which is like quite a feat, I think. Um, but yeah, Josh and Kyle were amazing as well. Like you could definitely tell that the the kind of the world was their oyster if they they put their mind to it, and they've both been extremely successful. Um, so much talent and, and natural physical ability, and also like football IQ as well. Like, yeah. Both of them are so impressive and such a like pleasure to play in the same team with. Um, Just quickly on Walker Peters, yeah. I think um, the, the the current sort of setups, especially at Spurs right now, would probably really suit his game, I guess, because the fullbacks are kind of coming into midfield and and getting a lot of touches on the ball. Um, I think under Poch, Walker Peters didn't. Well, he was. We were used to having kind of Carl Walker, who's like a, a physical like specimen who's obviously so strong so fast and we're so relying on him in, in both ends of the pitch I guess Walker Peters wasn't the prime replacement for that and I guess I've seen a lot of fans and I'm kind of including this who would love to have him back um, because of the roles that the fullbacks play now um, I guess do you think that those basically do, do players are players kind of molded into a first team role for them? So for example, if we're playing, you know, Andrew's obviously playing a certain system now, would a young player, do you think, be molded into a position that's going to suit them in the first team or are they molded as more rounded players, do you think? By the academy or the first team? By the academy. I guess like the the 23s and the 18s who are, who are kind of closer to, to the first team. It depends because I do think that like kind of touching on your question earlier, there will be a lot of players in our, in our youth team that the the academy managers like definitely wouldn't have been like, yeah, they're going to play for Tottenham in the first team. Their, their, their main goal would be to make sure they get a professional career. Um, yeah. And that would have been, most people would have been like trying to, trying to get them to have a professional career rather than necessarily break into the first team. And then they would have identi- and identified the few at the time that they were like, yeah, they've got a chance and the manager likes them and they think they could do it. Um, so I definitely think like that would have been quite specific to a select few um, and where they could fit into the first team structure at the time. I remember there was a couple of, there was a couple of, of players from, from our team, like Emmanuel Sanupe and Nathan Ottawa and, um, that were like on the brink. Like there were times where they were very, they, they seemed anyway to me that they were very close. They were doing very well in training with the first team and they were really close to breaking in and then it didn't quite happen for, for whatever reason. Um, but under Pochettino, it seemed like to me with the young players, you'd, you'd go up and train with them for quite a while before you were fully kind of blooded into the first team set up and stuff. Um, and so I think through that, you were very much, you were very much trained in the way that they wanted their team to play and the intensity that they wanted their team to play and how they wanted their players to carry themselves on and off the pitch, um, which I thought was a great thing. Like like Wingsy, for example, who trained for a couple of years before he fully cemented his place in there. So I think from that side, yeah. I definitely, I definitely think that whatever manager comes in, the academy adapts slightly. Like I, I definitely think like from Jose Mourinho to Pochettino, I think the academy would adapt their style or adapt how they are raising their boys generally a little bit to try and give them the best opportunity to get noticed or or make an impact on that squad. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it would have been a select few that they were really pushing, pushing, pushing hard that could actually break in and make a difference. Of course. Yeah, that, that all makes sense. And I guess, I think it was a Pochettino quote where he was saying that like players are there to train and, and the specified few get to play, but it's about building that culture within kind of day to day in the club that, that creates that team rather than the actual matches itself. So that kind of all makes sense um, mm-hmm. along with what you're saying with the academy. Um, so yeah, you touched on preseason tours, and and you went up, up with the first team at that time, I think, and went abroad. I can't remember where, where did you go to again. Uh, we went. To, one was Australia, one was America. 
Um, so yeah, we'll just, I guess, touch on um, what that experience was like being around, obviously, first team Spurs players as a, as a kind of Spurs fan growing up um, and and how the kind of opportunity, how much, how big was that opportunity, I guess, in your kind of planning of your professional career or, or hopes to be a professional player um, long term? Um, just quickly touching on, obviously, the likes of Ericsson, Kane, Deli Ali were, were all in the squad then. So it was a, it was a very like well liked team by the by the fans and, and and stuff like that. But yeah, what was that like? Australia was Australia was crazy, um, and for me, it was a really pivotal moment in my career. I trained with the first team quite quite a lot sporadically um, for two years or so. But then this was the first preseason tour, preseason tour that I'd been on, and I think I'd done well in preseason. Like my attitude was right, my mentality was right. Physically, I felt really good. But then I remember the first game was against Juventus, and I remember coming into the pre-match meeting, and they put the team up on the board, and I was starting, but I was starting left back, and I wasn't a fullback. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm starting left back against Juve tonight in front of like 35,000 people or however many were in the stadium. And that was a crazy moment. But, but the way that I guess um, that Tottenham team was playing at the time, like the fullbacks were quite advanced and, and did have quite a lot of freedom to get forward. And I remember playing pretty well. Um, and off the back of that game, Nigel Clough happened to be watching it. And when I came back from pre-season tour, I got approached to go on loan to Burton Albion in the championship, which was obviously a massive thing as well for like a, a 19, 20 year old to get a chance to play in the prep, to play in the championship. Um, so like that was a monumental moment in my career that, that in that one match, the opportunity that that gave me and the confidence that it gave me to play at that level, even out of position and, and hold my own against one of the best teams in the world with one of the best teams in the world. It, it, it was a fantastic moment. And I guess um, I feel like it's really, it's really true. Like the, the kind of, the, the standard of players you're playing with makes you up your game or can make you drop your game as well at times. And I think the, the mentality of that squad was so, so good. Um, they were such a tight unit and they know what they, they really knew what they were doing. And obviously the technical ability was so incredible. You It really raised your game very quickly. Um, and I think that was a big part of my development as well, like going into that and having to keep up and try and prove myself and, and get to those levels quickly, I think like was a, was a real privilege and gave me like a good, a really great platform to go and build the rest of my career on. Yeah, that, that, all, made, that all makes a lot of sense. Um, and I guess... We'll, we'll touch on kind of some individuals um, slightly later on with some quick fire questions, but, but yeah. And then, and then, so you did go on loan to Burton um, and that sort of, obviously I, I'm sure there was ups and downs, but how did you kind of, how did that go? And, and how did, how did you kind of then come to a decision that, that it wasn't going to be football long-term and as a career? And, and why was that um, you think just, um, I guess touching on also why you think there's such a kind of issue with with players that drop out dropping out the game um and and why there's why there's kind of some well a lot more talk around around the issues with that now um well Burton was crazy I remember my experience was was a bit mad cuz I I signed on loan on like deadline day and I went up to train with the team it was a Wednesday. No. I went up Wednesday night, trained with the team Thursday, and then they had a game against Derby live on Sky Sports Friday night. And and they put me in the squad and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm gonna I'm I'm in there to like just be around it and get a sense of what the team's like. Like at that point it was such a whirlwind, I didn't even know anyone's names. Like I was kind of at that point, I was like Googling the names before I got to the to the stadium. And then I, I got to say, I sat down in the change room and they put the team sheet up and I was starting, <laughs> I was starting up front and I was like, wait, what? Um, 
and that was like just the most I don't know probably the most adrenaline I've ever felt like walking out on on Sky Sports live playing in the championship barely knowing anyone's name in the team yet that was a pretty surreal experience so I was kind of thrown straight into the deep end there but Burton was amazing like Burton obviously to play in in a league like the champ which like physically is, is tough and and technically so so good like the level of players in the championship especially now even from 5 years ago or whatever so so high such a brilliant league to be a part of and play with um and we had such a good group of guys in that team like a lot of older guys and a lot of younger guys um there was a really good good mix and a good blend of experience and and kind of energy um and, I, and yeah i mean there was ups and downs and but I, I loved every minute of it to be honest i guess for me obviously I, in terms of coming out of the game i suffered a, a really bad injury i was playing against qpr at home and i dislocated my kneecap um and i was out for nearly a year um and the the rehabilitation process was was quite complicated it wasn't as straightforward as it as it as it as i would have hoped it was very difficult and i think um in that time not being able to play football i started trying to find other things that i could keep myself occupied with or you know cuz i couldn't do what i loved i needed to find something to distract myself and i started making little films and looking into that world a bit more and when i got back from my injury like to be honest i didn't feel quite the same i didn't feel quite the same physically like probably mentally but i didn't want to put my weight about in the same way like i I was, i was a little more hesitant in tackles um but to be honest like i fell in love with filmmaking like as cliche as that sounds and when i got back burton got relegated that season so in league 1 and i played another season in league 1 and and played well and really enjoyed the games that I, that, that i played in and got to play you know against man city and and um and all of that but at the end of the season my contract was up and there was just a part of me that felt like it was time for me to go on a different path and and i had other options in the summer and none of them felt right and i felt like it was it was right for me to go on this journey there was there was something kind of calling me and so i did but regardless of that even though it was my own decision i really didn't anticipate how difficult it would be to to leave football and kind of leave this idea of myself and this idea that everyone had of me for my entire life in the past um it almost like i don't know it feels like morning in a way it's like the death of the death of 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 this idea and this dream that you had for yourself your entire life I think football is really unique. Um th- th- there are definitely other other crafts and passions and and jobs but few that takes so much dedication from such a young age and and you know from for most people from 6 years old absolutely grafting and putting so much into football and then at 16 going full time and leaving leaving education behind at such a young age. You know when you get to like 21, 23 and then up there football at that point football is all you know and it is is how you kind of gauge the success of your or of your life at times um and so it's a very hard thing to lose and i i underestimated that and i guess since that um i've kind of made films about it and, and one in particular a film called broke to try and raise awareness or try and communicate kind of the experience that i went through and i guess to prepare people for I don't know the the turbulent journey that it is coming out of that um and the feelings that can come up and and how important it is to 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 talk about them and address them and not suppress them because that's certainly what I did for a long time and it made things worse so then made things better um so yeah I guess leaving football it it was intense losing that identity was far more difficult than I imagined and also changing lifestyle re- routine and and in your habits like going from training at you know going to training 9 a.m. every day and being out on the grass physically and being able to see the work you've put in how many kilometers you've run how much you're lifting how many goals you scored how many assists how many key passes how many tackles being able to gauge your success like that and then 
coming into a creative world where everything's subjective, it's a very different way of, of like finding your way um, and, and understanding how you're improving yourself. And so it's been a crazy journey, but I think that football builds so much character and builds so much resilience in, in people. And like, I'm very thankful that, you know, it kind of, it raises us, do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm thankful yeah. for all the experiences that I have. Yeah. And I can imagine that kind of, I guess the other thing is also, yeah, everyone looking at, at you from the outside is all they've ever known of you is, is a footballer um and kind of reinventing yourself and, and your careers is, is like it's like starting again almost all the all the stuff you've kind of worked mm. for and trying to build yourself back up in a completely different way um yeah i'm sure that, mm. that that can't be that can't be straightforward um but yeah i think i think that's a that's a definite good point in terms of it builds you for later life and i think if if, if players can channel that when they do drop out and channel that everything they've learned i guess um, into other things that's probably the best kind of route to go um but yeah mm. i think that's all that's all super interesting i'm just gonna do some quick fire questions now with you um before we wrap up kind of thing um i guess stuff that people want to know and and i probably want to know as well um so just starting with i guess touched on the current spurs first team coach and stuff i know you had a quite close relationship with Matt Wells, who's first team coach, um, and Ryan Mason, yeah. of course, I'm sure you know of or know. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think those guys are as coaches and have you heard anything kind of from them um, in terms of Ange and, and the current setup that's, that's happening there? Well, Wellesy, I had like a really close relationship with. Um, he was my under 23s coach for, for pretty much for the entire time I was there. And he really pushed my game and elevated my game for sure. Um, he even he even taught me like how to shoot properly as well, like how to hit the ball with top spin. Um, he was a brilliant coach, so meticulous, so focused, so passionate. Um, kind of just threw his entire self into his passion. Um, so hungry to learn, so curious all the time. Like I feel like away from football, I've taken a lot. Um, a lot away from him and 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 how he works. Um, Mace as well. Like I played with Mace a tiny bit in the twenty threes, and then like obviously training with the first team. He was he was in that that starting eleven against Juventus as well. So I played with Mace, and he was just a top guy, top top guy. I never I was never coached by Mace. I haven't, I haven't really seen him as a coach, but um, he was just a legend and, and proper good. Like with me personally coming up and. Um, Con continuously like talking to me and and trying to give me pointers when I was trying to break into the first team um I haven't heard too much but I mean it's Wellesley, Wellesley and Mace are great people and what's happening at Tottenham right now is so exciting like the the atmosphere that, that they've built and the way Ange's building this team and and the the spirit that he's kind of instilled into them is is so exciting and like for me like Every game, I'm just so excited to watch Tottenham now. The way that they're playing, like, um, it's 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 quite something. So it's a really exciting time, and I'm I'm so happy for Wellesley and Mace that they're part of that because, yeah, it's quite it's quite incredible. Okay, um, then quickly, who of the kind of first team squad in the Pochettino era impressed you most in kind of, I guess, mainly training? Um, like, who who was like when you got up there, you were just like in awe of, of how good they were. You know what? I'm like I trained with the first team sporadically. Like even under um Villas Boras, like I was training with the first team at points. Adebayor was was unreal. Adebayor was so good, like physically and technically, like in training, like was almost untouchable. Um from what I remember. Carl Walker was obviously just an absolute beast. But Dembele was ridiculous. Dembele was like just dirty from bother trying to press him. There's no well, point. And there's just no point. I guess no one really even even makes the effort to press him. You just cut the passing lanes. No. Nah. Like he just had this superhuman strength. Like it was like he was rooted into the ground and you just couldn't move him. And but along with that, he had he had the feet, like and he, his ball manipulation. 
he was ridiculous. Um, obviously, Harry Kane was was insane. Defo played a couple like development few first team matches where he just hit shots from anywhere and they go in. Um, yeah, they're they're probably the ones that that stick out. But there were so yeah. many great players though. Yeah, like, so <laughs> many great players. Yeah, that that team was was unreal. I think um... Trips Trips as well. Trippier Trippier was was so impressive. Like the the way that he could play one touch passes like blew me away. Like you've seen it, you know them long switches across the pitch where he on just crosses it in first time in the air. Yeah, like he's his technique is amazing, and he's such a such a great person as well. Um, and who yeah, who I guess like there. on a, on a personal level in in that first team was was big on on kind of helping you settle in when you were when you were going on the tours and and. And stuff like that. Um, I remember you had quite a good relationship with Ericsson, I believe. Um, but who else? I guess, or, or was that was that relationship good with Ericsson, or who 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 was there, kind of doing that? Yeah, no. Christian was was a proper top top guy, like really really great. Um, him, I remember Ben Davies speaking a lot, Trippier speaking a lot as well. Um, I would say those three from what I can remember were the most kind of influential on me. Dembele at, at times as well would say some things, but I think those, yeah, those four probably stick out in my mind as being the most influential on me and trying to guide me the most and give me, you know, give me, give me pointers and, and bits of advice. Um, but I must say like that entire team was made up of, of like good humans. Like I feel like, Pochettino built something really special there for a couple of years. Yeah, and then I got I got I got two or three more that were quite quite quick fire. One, someone someone wants to know what working with Tom Hardy was like. Um, so I guess that's from your <laughs> from your young acting career that you haven't even touched on. Um, but you were you were Oliver and Oliver Twist, um, and Tom Hardy was, was in there too. Um, what was that like? Quickly. Yeah. Um, if you even remember, I, know, I guess I was well. I was ten, so I was so young that I didn't quite understand the scale of what was going on. Like I didn't understand the pressure kind of placed upon me to play that role in like that BBC series and like working with people like Timothy Spall and Tom Hardy. But Tom was like, like me and Tom were like really close on set, and he like helped me so much and looked after me um a lot and I and you know he was like a proper hero of mine like really um I, I was in such awe of him and wanted to be like him but I do remember like he's such a good actor he's such a good actor he's so raw and real I remember doing one scene where he had to chase me up the stairs with a knife and he was so good as Bill Sykes and so frightening that I, they had to really convince me to do this scene. Um, it was such a challenge because he was so scary. I was like, Yo, I don't know if I can do this, but um, no, nah, he was amazing. And that was a real, like just random privilege that I got to be a part of that team to make, to make that series and play that role and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's a little small insight into your acting career there um two more questions i've got is one is um how do you kind of think the academy system and football has changed since kind of you dropped out or are you kind of not aware of that do you think there's been any changes um or do you think it's kind of quite a constant um thing through throughout time i guess i wish i was more clued up um i'm not that aware of how it's changed because I'm not around it enough. I've been back to Tottenham a few times, but I haven't, I haven't been, you know, glued to the training sessions or to the environment that's going on. I, I, I would say like I feel like generally the the standards probably got even better, especially maybe tactically and technically. Um, yeah, I guess if if you're not, aware. it's difficult for me to. Answer. If you're not yeah. aware, then how do you think, like, I guess the rise in social media um, and these mm. players being hyped from some such a young age now, I, I'm sure there was players who were hyped when you were there um, from like 16 or whatever, mm. but it wasn't at the kind of global level it's, it is now. 
do you how do you think that will impact mm. individuals and and do you think there was there like a, a feeling around the team I guess that certain players felt that hype and and, and kind of carried that with them yeah definitely when I was coming up there were certain people that were almost kind of mythical um in the way they were sp- spoke about within our team like some boys at Arsenal and at Chelsea and at United and whatever I think with social media now um and the way some young boys are hyped up I reckon it just it just makes if there is a fool it makes the fool greater I guess like being that put on that pedestal and that adored at that young an age if it doesn't work out or it doesn't you know get to the point where everyone expects you to and then therefore you expect yourself to I guess that might be a harder a harder come down um of course. and I think those 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 players like need people around them that are going to care about them and and look after them when they're not the, under the spotlight and they're not the main ones I think that's really important that there's an infrastructure in there to 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 I don't know guide guide these these boys because not everyone is going to be the superstar that they build out to be like there were so many players in in my era that were the next big thing and didn't make it and there were so many that weren't and did become the next big thing so I think for everyone and and also just at every stage like regardless of whether you're 16 18 25 30 35 when you come out of the game I think it's like I said it's such a ginormous part of our beings and of our lives and of our identities that I think the more there is in place, the more structure there is in place to 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 guide players out of it and and support them, the better. Because I know for myself and my own experience, it's, it can be tough. And last question: um, Who? But I want to just know both from both academy level and then maybe first team level. Who were the kind of standout players you played against um, in matches? Um, so I guess starting with academy football. Academy, um, Dan Crowley. I don't know if you remember him. He yeah, played Arsenal. for Villa and then got signed by Arsenal. Grealish. Grealish at Villa for obvious reasons. There was a player called Gideon Zelalem at Arsenal. Um, I remember playing one game against them at a tournament and just not being able to get anywhere near him. When he was playing as a four, I was playing as a ten. Josh Josh Onoma was was a force at that age for sure. Like he could really pick the game up by the scruff of his neck and like change momentum. There were so many good players, but I can name yeah. everyone. Like yeah, the perfect. England team I was a part of had 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 such good players as well. Um, and then and then at first team level, at first team level, who who's, I guess who have you stepped on a pitch with and just thought like they're ridiculous, even even if it was pre season or, or whatever. De Bruyne, bro, De Bruyne. I had to, I had to man mark De Bruyne in the Carabao Cup, and I remember, I f- I'm sure he was in second gear, like, but there was one point in the match where he played this pass. I think he played it to Mares, and it was such a good pass that no one else saw. I remember the referee being like, "Fuck, you know," and like, start <laughs> pegging it down the pitch because he couldn't read that that was where the game was gonna go. Yeah. Um. I would say De Bruyne. Aguero was playing that game. He scored, um, which was crazy. And then obviously, Dybala played in that Juve team that we played against. Torres was playing in the Atletico team that we played against in that preseason as well. Like he's a legend. Um, Phil Phil Foden in that Man City game as well. I had a good little battle with him at points. We have been lucky to play with and against some amazing right. players. Um, I just missed one out, and this was um, on two Spurs players. Before you go, is um, what were what was Eric Lamella like, and what was Deli Ali like? Um, I guess Lamella's got a bit of a reputation for being a bit crazy, um, and Deli Ali obviously is one of the most loved Spurs players of of the last mm. kind of two decades. What what were those two like individually? Lamella was a really great guy. Um, I remember like my biggest kind of like memory from him was how kind of aggressive he was in his style of play, like both defensively and offensively. Like he was, he was, you know, he would hound you for the ball and he would always go in a hundred percent. 
Um, this is what I kind of remember from him. Um, and then Del was like unreal, just like magic. Do you know what I mean? Um, absolute magic and just played off the cuff and the way that he improvised with the ball, like not many people could do. And and I think like for him as well, like how smart, how clever he was on the pitch and the positions he got himself into, the way he managed to score goals and be in the right place at the right time, like for me was no coincidence. Like he had such guile and he, he knew how to play matches like he'd been playing first team like in League One with MK Dons from a young, young age. So I felt like he just knew how to manage himself through games and um and how to play off people and he lo- I feel like he loved the battle like he loved he loved the conflict with people and that made him better so no it was a pleasure to play with both of them at times um yeah that's that's everything really that's been like really insightful stuff um thanks so much for for coming on um we'd love to obviously have you again at some yeah, point um where can people find your films um is there a central place where they all are or they all kind of dotted about yeah i mean my production company is called 180 productions so if you find them online you'll find you'll find all the we'll, films we'll put there. the link we'll put the um, link down um yeah yeah and yeah that's that's kind of everything thanks so much for coming on um and everyone else that's kind true. of please subscribe and, and like the video um but yeah thanks for having thanks for coming on and, and i'll speak to you soon bro not great to see you, man. Catch you in nice a bit. Months. Peace. Yeah.